Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Rochelle Emerson. And I'm going to go over Elaine Warnos' trial. Now, there's been documentaries. There's been all kinds of things done. And this is kind of like an anniversary. She was tried in... 1992 and she was sentenced to death in October in 2002 so it's been a it's been a minute since her death and a lot of people are fascinated by this she was uh, America's first woman serial killer really she captivated a lot of attention worldwide basically happy Halloween everyone um, but I, I, I found some old court TV footage of a, this whole trial was filmed. And again, she stood trial in 1992 for the murder of 52 year old Richard Mallory. And then she eventually confessed to the other seven men. And she was executed in 2002, like I said, and a year later. Just a year later, the movie came out. Monster uh, came out with with this movie, which was pretty quickly. But I guess really not. I mean, if she was in prison from 92 to 2002, right? That's a good bit of time for them to get this movie together. Now, this audio is yet to be desired. But uh, hopefully... Um, it won't be too bad. I don't know if I cut it back in the thing or not, if it's if it's going to help. But um, this is the prosecution's opening statement. Uh, and let's hear what he has to say about Elaine. Carol, I mean Carol Warnos, is charged with murder in the first degree by premeditation, by committing robbery felony murder, as well as armed robbery. <coughs> the evidence that we believe will be revealed during this trial over the next several days shows that on November 30th, 1989, a little over two years ago, Richard Mallory, age 51, turned east on the I-4 Interstate Highway near Tampa he didn't know that he was living the last day of his life. He didn't know that in less than 10 hours, he'd be robbed, murdered, and his body would be left to rot in the woods. Of course, he didn't know that he was about to pick up a predatory prostitute who had had sex with over 250,000 men. Uh, we do, Your Honor. Of course, he didn't know that he was about to pick up a predatory prostitute who had sex with over 250,000 men by her own admissions. He didn't know that he was about to admit and meet and admit to his car Eileen Carol Warnes, the woman who sits at this table. Okay, so they should have known she was crazy. 250,000 men she supposedly had sex with. That is absolutely ridiculous. By her own admission, 250,000? Seriously? Whose appetite for lust and control had taken a lethal turn. She was no longer satisfied with just taking men's bodies and their money. Now she wanted the ultimate control. Your Honor, I have to object. I believe the prosecutor is engaging in final argument. Well, I don't believe so yet, so the objection is noted and overruled, and uh, let's make a decision right now, and that decision is only going to be one counsel object. I'm not going to have all three of them jumping up and down, so I have one spokesman to speak for your group. Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. <coughs> Thank you. She now wanted the ultimate she wanted all that Mr. Mallory had. 
car, property, and his life. The next day, deputy sheriffs found Mr. Mallory's automobile abandoned in the woods north of Ormond Beach. Approximately two weeks later, on December the 13th, I found Mr. Mallory on the west side of the river, opposite side of the river, north of Ormond Beach. They found him covered with a carpet. His face and head had begun to decompose, so identification was not readily apparent at that time. They found four bullet holes in his body. They found his pockets turned inside out. He was fully clothed, and his pants were zipped. Ms. Warnos had shot and killed Mr. Mallory, taken his property, gone through his pockets, and covered him up, and then returned to her motel where her lesbian lover, best friend, Tyree Moore, and she used the car to remove their property to another residence. Shortly thereafter, she told Tyree Moore that she killed Mr. Mallory and that it was his automobile that she had used, they had used, to move the property. I didn't know she told him about that. Now, this is my first time seeing this whole opening statement. Now, I know Tyree ends up testifying for the prosecution, but I didn't realize Elaine had told her that she killed this guy. Ultimately, on January the 16th of 1991, approximately a year ago, she gave a complete statement after being advised of her constitutional rights, having had a lawyer summoned to protect her rights. She told Deputy Sheriff Larry Porzeppa of the Blue County Sheriff's Office several stories as to how the took place. Several stories, Your Honor. Section number. <coughs> All of the stories agree on a few points. She says that she was hitchhiking along the interstate, just east of Tampa, heading in an easterly direction, when she was picked up by Mr. Mallory on November the 30th, 1989. She says they traveled on the interstate across the state towards the Daytona Beach area, and while traveling, they drank and talked. In all of her stories, she says that she solicited him for an act of prostitution, saying that she needed money for her rent. In her story, she says that he was wearing blue jeans and a shirt. And without exception, she says that they began hugging and kissing after having found a place to park in the woods north of Daytona Beach and that they were having a good time and that it was her intent to engage in sex with him for money. In the first story, she says that Mr. Mallory paid her in advance, but that she became concerned that he might try to take the money back. And therefore, she jumped out of the automobile and pulled from her bag a gun, a pistol, that she had only had for approximately two days. She told him to get out of the automobile and step away. And then she changed her story. She said, no, he's missing. She changed the story, Your Honor. 
objection overruled. He stayed in the car, and then she didn't tell him to get out, but she shot him in the automobile while he's sitting behind the wheel. Doesn't remember whether she shot him two or three times. But that in any event, she ultimately killed him. Look at this. Do y'all see what I see? Jury people. Why are they on camera? I guess I need to do some investigation. When do they when did they stop going? Oh, we can't show the jury. But look at this. Look at this. Jury people being shown on camera. My goodness. The next story she told in the same interview, same officer, was again that she solicited the money. But this time, she said that they'd been drinking and talking and having fun for about five hours parked in the woods north of Ormond Beach. And that she decided he was a nice guy. And that she usually wanted her money in advance. But he was such a nice guy that she didn't think she really needed to get the money in advance. And then they began to move towards the ultimate act of having sex. But he wouldn't take his clothes off. He wanted to just unzip his pants. And she didn't like it that way. And they began to argue and struggle a little bit about it. And she got out of the car and said, no, you're not going to just fuck me. You're going to pay me. And then she shot him as he sat behind the wheel. It looks like just a jury of a bunch of women. In both stories, as she talks about the killing, she admits he was sitting in the automobile behind the wheel, fully clothed, when she shot him. And that she was out of the automobile with a loaded nine-shot revolver in his hand. And he with no weapon whatever. She says that after she shot him in the front seat, he crawled out the driver's door and shut the door. Because on the other side of that doorway was a woman who was pumping bullets into him. She says he crawled out the door. And then she ran around to the front of the car. And it's difficult to imagine, but she shot him again and fell to the ground and she shot him again. The evidence will give several explanations as to why she killed Richard Mallory. She told the deputy she didn't really understand why she shot him. She also said, well, it's because he didn't pay me. And she also said, well, it's because he was going to try to take the money back. And also because he wouldn't take his pants off. She didn't want to have sex that way. From her statement, she know that he was targeted because he was middle-aged. And according to her, it wouldn't make much difference if she killed him because he didn't have any parents. I guess that means... Objection. That's no rule. The real reason is you sort out the evidence in its totality are not all that complex. She says she doesn't really know why she killed him. 
but the evidence tells you why she killed him. She killed him out of grief. She was no longer satisfied with $10 or $20 or $40. She wanted all. And she had to take it. And she did. And she used a gun to take it. And she shot him to keep it. She also told the deputy that she needed to kill him dead, not just shoot him, because she didn't want to leave a witness. And she had a very practical reason for that position. She said, after all, I'm a professional road highway prostitute. And if I didn't kill him, I couldn't go back out on the highway. They would find me. She might have had to find another way to make a living. And she didn't want to be caught. And she wanted to be certain that there was no way that she could be punished and held responsible <coughs> for killing this man in cold blood and robbing him. Intent, she said that she intended to let him die. Ultimately, and the bottom line is, and the evidence in its totality will show that Eileen Carol Warnus liked control. She had been exercising control for years over men. Tremendous power possessed through prostitution. She had devised a plan now and carried it out to have the ultimate control. All that Richard Mallory had, she took, including his life. And under the law, under the law, she must pay with her life. Objection, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. With the uh, <coughs> Defense desire to make an opening statement at this time. Do you reserve open statement? I desire to make an opening statement. You may proceed, ma'am. All right, this is going to go right into uh, the defense's opening statements. So I'm just going to put it all in one. Okay, please support the counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence is going to show that when Eileen Wernus jumped into the car with Richard Mallory on that rainy night in December of 1989, she had no idea that she was going to be traveling with him into a nightmare and that that ride would ultimately bring her into this courtroom today. The evidence will show that on the day that she met Richard Mallory, she had been to Fort Myers. She had received six rides on her way back. It was getting late and she was real tired. She stopped near the uh, interstate I-4 and 75 and it was raining. So she got under the overpass in order to stay out of the weather until it would clear up. She was standing in the shadows. As she was standing in the shadows, a car passed by. She saw the lights, she saw it pull over, and then it began to back towards her through the dark. You will hear that she was frightened. Because of the weather and because of the darkness, she couldn't tell who was in the car. She couldn't tell if it was a car full of guys or what it was. She didn't think she could be seen there. You are going to hear evidence that Lee has been on her own since she's been a very small child. You will hear that she's been living on the roads. You're going to hear that she's a prostitute, living from one highway exit to the next. You're also going to hear that home for her 
as the prosecutor has indicated to you, is a motel. When times are good, she rents a motel by the week. When they're lean, she rents them by the day. You're also going to hear that times were changing out on the roads. Existence for Lee was getting to be very dangerous. The frequency with which she met physical abuse was escalating. Remember, she started on the roads when she was a young, young girl. <coughs> Things were changing. Time after time after time, she was raped. Time after time after time, she was beaten up and she wasn't paid. Finally, she armed herself. This night that Richard Mallory stopped on the side of the road and backed towards her, she was making a decision. Do I try to get dark or get back farther in the shadows? Do I try to hide or do I wait and see and possibly someone that can give me a ride, someone that I'll feel safe with? Well, ultimately, he asked her if she wanted to go with him and go for a ride. That he was going all the way to Daytona and that's where she was trying to go. She knew that her very best friend, her roommate, the person that she was helping to support would be waiting for her and would be wondering why she was out so late. She was happy that she had just one ride now that would take her all the way to Daytona because as I said before, it had taken her six rides to get from Fort Myers to the side of the road where Richard Mallory stopped to pick her up. So they began to travel towards Daytona. You will hear evidence that Richard Mallory was drinking, that he was fixing himself mixed drinks and that he offered her a drink. You will also hear that Eileen drinks when she's out on the road. She drinks when she's on the road because it gives her courage and it keeps her from being too nervous. So she'd had some beer before she got into the, the car with Mr. Mallory. But Mr. Mallory offered her some of his alcohol. And he also offered her some marijuana. He was smoking marijuana. You will hear that she told him no, that she didn't like marijuana, but it didn't bother her if he smoked, because her roommate did. But she did want a drink. She wanted to rest and have a, a straight shot <coughs> home to Daytona. So you will hear that they continued to drink. You will hear that she was getting concerned because he was smoking so much. You will hear that he stopped at one point to get gas and that he asked her if she wanted beer. And yes, she did. She did want beer. At some point, she indicated to him that she needed to make some money for groceries and for rent. And you've heard that Lee is a prostitute, and that is how Lee earns money. Mr. Mallory said he was looking for a good time, so this was perfect. They returned to Daytona. They got into Daytona late that night and they went to a secluded area. They stayed in that area until almost 5 o'clock in the morning, talking and drinking, having fun. You will hear that Lee had decided that, that she could trust him. She started feeling comfortable with him. They have not been having sex up to this point. They've been talking. You will hear that Mallory had a lot of things that he wanted to talk over, had some problems in his life. You will hear that at approximately 5 o'clock in the morning, Mallory asked Lee, are you ready to earn your money now? Lee said yes. You will hear that Mr. Mallory suggested that she take off all of her clothes. That way he would be assured that she wasn't going to run away or going to rip him off. Lee, once again, as I told you before, thought that she could trust this person. So she agreed. She began to take off her clothes. 
At that point, Mr. Mallory says, I'll be right back. <clears throat> I've got to get something out of the trunk. Lee thought that was fine. Mr. Mallory got out of the car. He opened up the trunk. Lee folded up her clothes neatly and put them in the back seat. She waited a good while. Soon she heard the trunk close. She was in darkness. Mr. Mallory opened the door. And he also opened a nightmare for Lee. This wasn't the nice, calm person. Again, he'd been smoking all night long and drinking. And, and Lee had been drinking also. But you will hear evidence of bondage, rape, sodomy, and degradation. And Lee was a victim to that. Ultimately, after a good period of time, Lee was able to get away from him, to pull away from him. During the period of time that she was being subjected to the abuse that Mr. Mallory was inflicting, he told her, I've done this to other women. He wanted to see her pain. As I told you before, Lee had begun to carry a weapon. Lee had a weapon in her purse on the floorboard, on the passenger side of the front seat. Lee got that weapon, and she shot Mr. Mallory. She got out of the car. Mr. Mallory was still coming towards her. She said, don't come any closer. Don't come any closer or I'll shoot again. And he was cursing at her. He was wounded. He was angry. And he said he was going to kill her. And he kept coming, and she shot him again. You hear testimony that she was terrified. She didn't know what to do. She decided she needed to get out of there. She wanted to take the car and get away. She drove his car, totally nude, frantically, driving to get away from there, to get away from the situation that she'd just been involved in. Drove for a good distance, again, nude, driving, trying to get away, running. Ultimately, she found a place to stop. She got dressed, and then she tried to figure out what to do. She knew she couldn't go to the police. She knew she couldn't tell anybody who was going to believe her. She's a prostitute. <clears throat> Mr. Mallory was a businessman. She knew they weren't going to believe her. So she went home. She went to her girlfriends. Actually, it was both, both of them are living in this motel room at the same time. They've been living together for several years at this point. And she told her about it. And you will hear that Tyra Moore was supportive and understanding and told her that she should take care of herself, that she should defend herself, that she shouldn't be treated like that. However, you're going to hear that, that Ty has kind of changed her mind about that. You're going to hear that she changed her mind when there was a composite on the TV for two women. And you're going to hear that Ty agreed to assist law enforcement and come down to Florida and help them catch her friend and her lover. And you will hear that she did that. She came down to Daytona. Law enforcement put her in a motel, paid for all of her expenses, basically said, gave her whatever she wanted, beer, food, shopping at the mall. And she stayed in that motel, wrote a letter 
to me, told her where she was going to be, and asked that she call her collect at the motel. And for a period of either three or four days, she worked on Lee to get Lee to say that she had done this and that Ty didn't have anything to do with it or didn't know about it. Finally, after Ty had threatened to kill herself, after Ty had told her that her family was being threatened, she finally convinced Lee to tell law enforcement about it. Now, you're going to be seeing a video of Lee talking to law enforcement. Contrary to what the prosecutor has told you, you are not going to hear several stories about what happened. You're going to hear her say, I will protect Ty. I will do anything. I would even die for her. And you will hear her give one version of what occurred. And you will also hear her saying, I was so drunk. I was just so drunk. She will say, I was drunk royal. During the time that she was out in the woods with Mr. Mallory, her constant knowledge of impending danger was blurred by alcohol. She was really drunk. And she apologizes to law enforcement. I'm confused. I can't remember everything. I was just so <coughs> drunk. But you will hear her tell one version of what occurred out there. You will hear that he got violent with me. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Wernus is not guilty of first degree premeditated murder or armed robbery. She defended herself. She had had enough. Not one more time could she take it. Not one more time. Thank you. Can you believe they were showing the jury? I had never seen these two clips. And I, I discovered it on uh, Court TV. Has the whole entire trial. I thought, you know, I'm going to go check this out. And I was, I'm, I'm watching it. The, the jury is in the picture? What is going on? So I don't know. This is back in 1992. But we all know she had a tragic childhood. Um, I'm going to continue and do the the next day. Or the next clip. I don't know if it's the next day or not. The way Court TV's got this chopped up. It's kind of not like how they do it now. Which is obviously much better. But this is like in, in segments. Clips. Um, I believe I'm on uh, Court TV. It's their website or something. I'll put the link in the description. So it's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed that. It was quite interesting. We all know how it turns out. She, you know, she finally confesses, comes clean, says she did it later on while she's in prison. Uh, there was a documentary done. And uh, she said, yeah, she wanted to confess before she goes in the chamber and give her life to Jesus and all of this kind of stuff. So uh, this that opening statement from the the defense was i guess hogwash and then she changes her tune again so i i don't know it's it's kind of crazy how it how it went up and down but um i hope you found that as interesting as i did and um i'm gonna do another video of uh the following where they get their first uh witnesses the prosecution well thank you thank you for joining me and peace out